a story. This one is called The Little Lamb, and it reminds me of when I was a little girl. Around the end of March, the beginning of April, we would have baby lambs and baby goats be born at our house, and I would help bottle feed them. So this little girl, girl reminds me of me. Enjoy. The Little Lamb. One afternoon in early spring, Emmy walked over to the Weatherby farm. There were 20 newborn lambs in the flock and Emmy couldn't wait to see them. All the lambs had long wobbly legs and little pointed hoofs. Most of them were white, but a few were black. Emmy stood on a rock and watched them follow their mothers into the barn. Mother sheep usually keep their babies close to them, but one little white lamb wandered away from the flock. He seemed to be lost. Bah! 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 He cried. Emmy jumped off the rock and the little lamb right, ran right up to her. Mrs. Weatherby asked Emmy if she would like to take care of the lamb until he was big enough to come back to the flock. He had a twin brother and their mother did not have enough milk for two babies. Emmy was so happy she bent over and kissed the little lamb. Then she gently picked him up and carried him home. He was cuddly and warm and she could feel his heart beating. Emmy decided to call her lamb Timothy. That evening, Emmy heated milk for her lamb. She sat down under the maple tree and gave him his bottle. At first he wiggled and chewed the rubber nipple. Warm milk dripped all over Emmy, but Timothy quickly learned to sit still and drink his milk. Emmy was a good mother to Timothy. She fed him twice a day and gave him plenty of love. Soon, Timothy followed Emmy wherever she went. By summertime, the little lamb didn't need to drink milk from a bottle anymore. He was big enough to eat grain out of a dish. His fleece had grown thick and woolly. Emmy put a collar and a bell around Timothy's neck. He slept in the barn, curled up in the warm straw outside the horse's stall. On summer days, Emmy and Timothy went to the fields together. While they played hide and seek, midnight the cat chased after bumblebees. Emmy would hide in the tall grass, but sooner or later, Timothy always found her. When Timothy was tired, he plopped down to rest on Emmy's lap. Sometimes Emmy liked to make dandelion chains and pretend she was a princess. The only trouble was Timothy ate the dandelions. When Emmy wasn't around to play, Timothy always seemed to get into mischief. He would rub his back against the sheets on the clothesline or jump into the laundry basket for a nap. One morning, oh no, Timothy tipped over a basket on the porch. Bumpity bumpity bump, a whole bushel of apples bounced down the steps. Ay ay ay. Then Timothy scampered into the garden. He ate the tops off all the radishes and trampled the lettuce plants. After that, he started eating the primroses. Emmy found Timothy hiding behind the house, full of vegetables and flowers and feeling quite sick. She poured some medicine into a spoon and Timothy swallowed it all. The next day, Timothy was feeling fine. Emmy decided to give him a bath. She wanted him to look his best because they were going to a birthday party. Emmy filled the wash tub with warm soapy water and scrubbed Timothy's ears and chin. She shampooed his fleece until it was soft and white. Then she rubbed him down with a fuzzy towel. Later on, when he was dry, she combed his woolly coat. Emmy's father drove them to the party in his truck. Emmy was wearing her party dress and Timothy had a new purple leash. The birthday party was lots of fun. All the children wore paper hats and bright balloons hung over the table. When the children sat down for ice cream and cake, Emmy tied her lamb to the table to keep him close. Uh-oh. Suddenly, bang! A balloon popped. The loud noise frightened Timothy. He tried to run away. The table collapsed, the ice cream spilled, and the cake slid to the ground. What a mess! That evening, Emmy's father said Timothy was getting too big to keep as a pet. Aww. Early the next morning, Emmy walked Timothy to the Weatherby farm. She hugged Timothy's woolly neck and promised to visit whenever she could. Then she took off his purple leash and Timothy scampered out to meet the flock. 
He buried his nose in a clover patch and grazed with the other sheep in the morning sun. Timothy was back where he belonged. Now there were 20 lambs again at the Weatherby Farm. The end.